So if you're having problems with Shotcut being a little bit slow or laggy sometimes, this video should help. I'll be going over some ways and some settings that you guys can change to improve your overall video editing experience when using Shotcut. So let's get started. So these settings should help you out when it comes to the overall performance of Shotcut. Now there are a lot of factors that may influence this, such as your computer hardware or even your overall computer system that you're running. Since we know that video editing is really dependent on CPU, RAM, and the GPU can also be a good contributor. So depending on your specs and what computer system you're running, it's really dependent on the performance that Shotcut gives you. But these settings should help you out to get a smoother performance. All right, so we're in Shotcut right now and I'm going to be showing you the first set of settings that you guys can change in order to actually have a better playback experience when you're scrubbing through your videos or you're just trying to view them while you're editing. So for this we're just going to go to settings and we're going to use the real time and the progressive settings. As you can see I already have them marked so I'm just going to unmark those right now. I'm going to uncheck them and you guys will be able to see the difference. So right now this is the original clip that I'm using with no enhanced settings. You can see that the frames are barely moving and it's kind of lagging. So if I go back to the settings and just check the real time frame dropping settings you can see that the video is now playing a little bit more smoother and as you can see there are many other settings that you guys can mess around with like the real-time setting the progressive setting as well as the preview scaling setting that you guys can use this will basically scale your preview when you're watching your video on the preview screen when you're making these edits you can also use the proxy the interlaser and interpolation settings that you guys can mess around with now I already have these settings adjusted to how I know my system can run it and it runs pretty smooth but you guys might have to do some testing and try each setting to see what combination works the best for you. So all these settings, if you enable them and you put them at a setting that you know that works together really well, should really help you guys have a better playback experience. You can also go to the video mode and change the video mode that you're actually watching your video as you edit. Now you can always change this back when you're about to render, but I always keep it at a default at 1080p, 60fps, but all these settings are different options for you guys to use, either to use separately or all together in order to have a better playback experience when you're editing it, making your video editing process a little bit more smoother. Now I know there is one more setting that you guys can use and for that we're just going to go back to settings and we're going to use the proxy option. Now this setting is a proxy file that will be converted from your original clip. Now by choosing this option you just have to click on the proxy and just click it to enable it. It should take a while to pop up a new window asking you guys if you want to make proxies for every file in this project. For now I'm just going to say no because I'm just using one file but if you you want to make proxies for every single file that you guys are using well you can do that i usually just recommend it making it separate for each individual file and as you can see the proxy is on and if i hit play it plays really smoothly as you can see right now so all you have to do is just go to the proxy option and turn it on and it makes this file which is basically a converted file that basically optimizes this file so it can be better viewed when you're editing now you can also make and download this proxy file and save it onto your computer and all you have to do is just make sure that you select on the video file that you're editing editing, go to properties and use proxy. From there, the job tab will open and it will start downloading a proxy file for the video file that you have chosen. However, you don't have to do this. You don't have to make a proxy file and save it onto your computer since it already gives you that option to use it inside Shotcut itself. Now there is one more setting and one more option that you guys can use and it's basically converting your footage. Now all you have to do is just go back to the properties, select convert and a new window should open up which says convert to edit friendly. Now this basically gives you a summary of what it is and what the file would turn out to. Now we got three options which is good, better, and best. But as you can see the file sizes do change depending on what setting you're converting your file to. So the better the file is, the more bigger the size will be. So the sweet spot that I've used in order to test this is between good and better. So you'll have a medium range to a large size file when you're converting this video file to make it a little bit more friendly when you're editing it. Now the difference between good, better, and best when it comes to playback smoothness on Shotcut does vary depending on your computer system, but I found the best option to use is the better or large file size when you're editing it. The difference between the better and the best option when you're converting it is 
is really small and I don't think it's really worth it for the larger file size to have the best quality. So if you're using good or the better option, you should be fine and it should play really smoothly when you're editing it. So all you have to do is just hit OK and you gotta let it download in the jobs tab as it opens. So as you can see the converted file of our original clip has finished rendering or loading and as you can see we have the two files on our playlist and I have moved the converted file onto the main timeline. So if we play it out real quick we can see that it's really smooth and there's basically almost no lag whatsoever and that's just using the converted file that we just converted our original clip into. So as you can see this is a different option that you guys can use in order to improve your lag or experience a smoother playback when editing. So the last thing I want to show you is just a simple recap on how these simple settings can actually affect your playback when you're editing a video. So right now this is the original clip that has not been converted or anything and right now I'm just going to disable the real time frame dropping setting and the progressive and all these other settings including the proxy setting. I'm just going to be turning it off so you guys can see how the original file would play using Shotgun. So as you can see if I hit play it's really laggy and it's dropping a few frames and it's not really performing really good. So in comparison I'm just going to turn back all the settings that I've had, the real time dropping and the progressive scale and with those two simple settings you can see that it has improved dramatically playing a little bit more smoother than the original file itself. You guys can mess around with the previous scaling, the interlace and interpolation settings as well as the proxy settings. So in comparison I'm just going to turn on the proxy setting so you guys can see how much better it gets if you using these settings when you're editing. So as you can see the proxy is on and we can see that the file has changed to a proxy file and I'll have everything else all the other settings turned on and as soon as I hit play it plays really smooth as expected and there's basically almost zero to no lag at all. So as you can see there are different options for you guys to use when it comes to adjusting shotcut to your needs depending on how smooth you want your playback to be and to reduce overall lag at all. But these are the settings and options that I found the best to work when you're trying to reduce lag and improve the overall optimization when you're editing with Shotcut. So if you were having problems with Shotcut just because of this main reason, well, I hope this video helped you out. Now, if you're struggling with anything else on Shotcut or just wanna learn how to edit better videos using Shotcut, well, I have a full-on playlist for you guys covering different types of tutorials and topics when we're talking about video editing in Shotcut. So I got that playlist ready for you guys just in case you wanna check it out. But if you have any other questions or any other suggestions for any future videos, well, let me know down in the comments. But that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.